Today's project is installing a new solar vent to keep your cabin ventilated day and night. Hi, I'm Doug and this is my first mate Peggy. Together we're sailing the coast of Maine in our 30 foot hunter called Lavender Love. Hey all my boating friends, thinking about all those boat projects that I need to do. One of those is replacing the solar vent that is kind of falling apart. It's cracked and the vent doesn't work. So last fall I purchased a new stainless steel vent. It has a nice little light here, but the only problem is it goes in the hatch and the hatch cover is a little bit small. So I need to redo the hatch cover with a new piece of Lexan and shift the hole over a little bit and then remount the lock for the hatch. So, got my work cut out for me. I'm gonna use a router with a flush cut bit to get the shape of the outside of the Lexan. So I need to clean this up, roughly cut it out, and then to go over it with a router, get that nice shape, mark the hole, Cut a four and a half inch hole, I believe it is four and a half or four and three quarters. And then drill the hole for the latch right here. And then I should be all set. Some people silicone it in. I am going to use the ring and put bolts through and secure it that way. There's a gasket. If that doesn't work down the road, I can always go back with silicone. So let's get started on this project. So the first thing to do is to clean up the old plexiglass, get all that old caulking off of there so that I can use it as a template. Once that's cleaned up, I'll mark the outside of the old plexiglass onto the new Lexan and then cut just outside of the line. Now I'm using the two square edges of the new plexiglass so that I don't have to cut those two edges. So actually I'm just cutting the two edges and rounding the corners a little bit. To cut the Lexan, use a fine tooth blade in the jigsaw, make sure everything is supported well underneath it, and move slowly, just fast enough to cut it. I also left the protective film on the Lexan so that I don't scratch it. I cut about a sixteenth or so beyond the pencil line that I did on the Lexan so that I can use a flush cut router bit to get that final shape. If you leave too much beyond the pencil line, it makes it a little hard for the router bit to cut it. Now you want to secure these two pieces together and make sure they don't slip. So I'm using double-sided tape here, and I'm also going to put a couple of clamps on there so it doesn't shift around when I'm doing the routering. Now you also want to take the sharp edge off the Lexan, so I'm using a belt sander flipped over. I find that to be an easy tool to use. Clamp it down so it doesn't slide. I have it here on a piece of carpet pad so the sander doesn't move around. But you could clamp one down on the table and round off the edges. Get rid of that sharp edge on the corner so that you can caulk that in nicely. The next step is to mark out the hole where the fan goes down. Now I had to shift this over. I needed to make sure that everything would work properly, that the hatch would open and close, and that the lock mechanism would fit on there too. So I'm marking it out carefully. Then I'll drill out a couple of holes so that I can use a jigsaw to cut the inside of that. You'll want to cut a sixteenth or an eighth inch larger than the hole that you mark out so that the whole fan assembly sits down in there nicely. Here I drill a couple of pilot holes so that I can get the jigsaw blade down in and get things started. There are different ways you can do this, but I find it easier to support the Lexan with a block of wood so that things don't bounce around. Then I mark out and drill the hole for the lock assembly with a Forstner bit, which is not a very aggressive bit. It cuts nice and smoothly. 
piece of scrap wood. The flange is held down with four stainless steel nuts and bolts. So I drill a pilot hole first, then remove the flange and do the final drilling with the right size drill bit. And this is my favorite step, peeling off the protective layer and showing the final product. So everything is back together, the lock arm is on, the flange is on with the gasket, and the nuts and bolts are on, not too tight, and it's back to the boat to put everything together and caulk it in. The frame and the Lexan get cleaned up with a solvent. Here I'm using denatured alcohol. Just get any oil or grease off of there and get the caulking to stick well. Both the frame and the Lexan get taped off well with a blue painter's tape, trimming around the corners to get a nice straight line of caulking. The caulking that I use is a Dow 795 made for these applications. It adheres to a lot of different surfaces, but the downside is it is messy. It Make sure the caulking gets pushed down into that space so that there are no air bubbles or gaps between it. You want that to be well sealed. So I tend to put in more than I need and then push everything down with my finger and get a smooth edge before the tape comes off. Now you don't want to let this dry up hard before you pull the tape off. So I'm letting it skin over and then I can peel the tape back and clean off any excess that happens to get smeared on the Lexan. The new fan is larger than the old one so the arm didn't fit in that original space anyway so I had to find a new home for it. I ended up screwing it to the wood that's underneath the hatch. If we ever need to open it, we can, but for the most part, we're just going to run the fan. I guess doing projects like this is just a part of owning a boat. I hope you enjoyed following along as we work on our boat and sail around the coast of Maine. We hope to see you next time.